What's up everybody? Welcome to the last part of the three-part series about GetX Basics. So in the past two videos we covered route management and state management and then there's also a lot of other features that GetX has and so this is what this video is all about. We're going to cover things like binding, internationalization, validating emails, storing values, changing theme, and other stuff. So let's just get right into it. So one pretty simple thing that Get Material app does is lets you change your transition. So you saw the next route, that's the very basic transition that Flutter offers. But we can change that transition just by doing default transition, then transitions dot, let's just do fade, you see? It'll fade in from the bottom. Or you could do anything like zoom, for example, that's completely different. You see it zooms into the next route. And super simple. All you have to do is put it inside the Get Material app. So that's quickly transitioned. Next is internationalization. So we're gonna create a new folder, utils. This just goes with my folder structure that I normally use. We're gonna have a translations.dart. And then here we're just gonna copy a bunch of translations. So here basically we're making four different translations for the title property. We'll have the English, the United States English, Portuguese, and Brazil Portuguese. And then how do we use this? So we can create a default locale of English in the United States. So that would print this one, hello world from US. And then we also need to give a translations property for the whole app of translations. Actually my translations, because that's the class we're gonna use for the app. So there we go, so now all your translations will be available throughout the app. And which translation will show will be based on your locale. So let's just put in the title. So we want the, the title property. And the way you get it is you do TR and that's it. And there you go, you get hello from US. So if we change this to, let's say PT and Brazil, and we reload it, See, hello from Brazil. And you can change that live within your app with get.update locale to, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's the right pronunciation, but so let's say EN. Then when we click this, we get hello world percent S. That's because this one is with an argument. So how do you pass that argument? Just go up here. Instead of tr, you do t args. And then you can pass tatis. If you reload that, hello from Brazil, and then hello world tatis. So you can pass arguments to your translation too. And now let's just do this for the other three options. There we go, we have English, hello world, Tadis, hello world from U US, Portugal, and Brazil. That's pretty much it to translations. It's just a little bit of setup that it requires. Now the next thing I think is my favorite part of this video and it's bindings. So what we're doing here is when we go to the second screen, we're injecting our sum controller. But you're doing it inside the stateless widget and wouldn't it be nice if you could automatically inject it whenever the screen or this widget is built. So you can do that with bindings. Let's create another folder called bindings inside the controllers because we'll probably be binding to a controller. And we can create a sample bind. Inside here, You'll have sample bind extends bindings. And you'll need to override a function called dependencies. And then within this dependency, you could do get dot lazy, lazy put, and some controller. Now, we have our binding defined, but we need to bind it to the actual route. So in our main, we have our second page, 
we can add a binding for sample bind. And that's it. Now we can go to our second page. We can remove this and everything will still work. Let's actually put a print out here. So if we restart, you can see whenever this screen is entered, we will get our binding called. There, perfect. We didn't have to initialize our sum controller anywhere. Upon entering the screen, it gets lazy loaded in and we're able to use it. Real simple and super powerful. For example, if you want to have lots of controllers that get loaded on when a screen shows up, this is probably the place to do it. So next part, email validation. In the first screen, we have this text field and we want to validate whether it's an email. So we have our email controller set up and whenever it's pressed, we check get utils is email. And you notice there's a lot of properties you can check, it, not just email. Is equal, is HTML, anything. Is email, and then we pass the email controller dot text. And we can easily do a snack bar, correct? Format. Then if it's not email, we can do bad format. Bad email format and then give it a red color. All right, so let's try it out. Just tap in, hey, it's a bad format, that's not an email. Hey at gmail.com. Correct format. Simple as that. Doesn't get any easier to validate text fields. Next, we got my second favorite, storage. So let's say we have our counters. You see, every time we restart the app, the counters go away. It would be nice if you would be able to store these on the device and be able to get them back whenever the app rebuilds. So for the storage right now, it requires another package called get underscore storage. I'm assuming the storage will get merged into the actual Git library, but for now, it's a different package, so make sure you don't forget about that. But then in the second screen, let's get to the store values part. How to do it? All you have to do is define a storage, create an instance of the get storage box, and actually one more thing before that, in the main, you need to initialize storage. And you do that by get storage dot init. You need to do it before your material app runs. So then we get back to here. Here's how simple it is. We just do box dot write and it needs a key to write and then a value. So for the key, we'll just do count one and value. We have our sum controller. So let's just find that and give it count one. And then same thing with count two. And there we go. That's all you need to do for storage. These things will get stored now. Obviously we still won't see here because we haven't stored it first of all and we're not reading it. What's the best way to read this? It'd probably be whenever this controller is being initialized, right? So you can go to our sum controller and let's override the on init function. So whenever this controller is initialized, we will get our storage box. And if it's not empty, so we could do like box.read count one does not equal no. I have seen a professional app. You should probably check that both count one and count two aren't null, but we know we're going to always write count one and count two together. So if one's there, both of them are going to be there. So then we can take count one dot value equals box dot read count one. Same thing with count two. And that's it. So whenever this controller is initialized, it will read the values from storage and update our counts with the values that were stored. 
So let's try it out. We have increment one. Let's store those values. And we have a problem because we're trying to convert an Rx int object to a actual value. That is because over here when we just did count one, we gotta make sure we do value. Because count one is an observable object, not the actual number. All right, so now if we save that, we're able to increment, store those values. And if we reload the app, go to the next screen, they're right there, right where we left. Increment that, store values, reload. Everything is saved. Super simple. Now last couple quick things. You can change theme. So let's see if get is dark mode. Get.change theme to theme data dot light. If it's light mode, get change theme to theme data dot dark. And that's how simple it is to change themes. Just click it and you can change themes just like that. You see the color changed back to blue and that's because the light theme by default is blue. I just changed in the main, but if you update your theme data.light to have purple, then it'll go back to purple. And last thing, it's really easy to get properties like screen height and everything. We can just take a look at it quickly. So like get.height to string, get.width to string, get platform if it's iOS, it's Android. Get all these properties really simply without needing context, without needing anything. If we just save that, see so we'll change theme. Our screen size 815, screen width 375. Is it an iOS device? It is. It's not an Android device. And there's lots of other fields you could easily get. All this stuff normally, you need the context and everything with here. You just do get dot with. That's it. So those aren't all the other features that Get has. There's even more things than that. But I just thought I'd do a quick run through of the ones that I think I would mostly use at least. Overall, that's it. That's the basics of Get X. Hope you enjoyed this three part series. I really like this Get package. I think it makes things very simple and easy to use. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. This code will be on GitHub like always. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the series and this video. And thanks for watching.